Well, you've got to remember that what we eat and what we drink primarily provides the operational environment for the brain, plus the input from the senses. So if you think of it this way, the brain is a metabolic powerhouse. It uses something like 20% of available energy, despite the fact that it's only 2% of body mass. And the nutrients, the energy, are all vital for the functioning of the brain to operate normally. And obviously, if you don't eat an appropriate diet, then that, uh, that will alter the function of the brain. And because the brain controls behaviour, these problems of diet are going to manifest behaviourally. There's very good evidence to suggest that if you eat an inadequate diet, you're doing almost the opposite of alcohol. With alcohol, if you consume it, it alters your brain chemistry, but generally you're aware of it. And, you know, we know that it makes people more leery, perhaps more disposed to be argumentative and violent. Diet, in effect, does it the other way around. If you starve the brain of nutrients it needs to function normally, it will also result in disinhibited behaviour. Um, and so the important thing is to ensure that the brain receives adequate um, quantities of the full range of nutrients. The problem is that we overconsume certain nutrients like sugar, saturated fat, etc., and salt, for instance, but there are also a lot of nutrients like iodine, zinc, omega-3 that are shortened diets. And these are the nutrients which are finding appear to make a, a major difference to the way the brain performs and hence our behaviour. There is already very strong scientific evidence that the um, diet that people consume has a direct bearing on their behaviour, specifically in three prison studies. Um, the difference that simply improving the prisoner's diet has made ranges from 26 to nearly 70% fewer offences in the group that have their nutrient intakes boosted by food supplements. The problem is that the um, government tends to simply look at the cost of that intervention, which might be as little as 10p a day, and completely forget to take into account the potential savings in other parts of the prison system, such, for example, as reduced health care, reduced risk of suicides, etc., etc. And, of course, it makes it a much safer environment for prison staff, sadly, a large number of whom receive assaults over a year. One of the problems in criminal justice is if you intervene too early you end up with escalating offending because often you introduce um, a, a less sophisticated juvenile offender to a more sophisticated cohort if, for instance, you bring them into the care system. If you intervene too late you often end up with a family breaking down which also results in escalating offending. So if you're damned, if you do, damned if you don't. It's a very difficult balance to get. In contrast though with nutrition when is it ever going to be prejudicial or labelling to the young person to give them a better diet? It isn't. You know, it's safe. And the only risk to this approach is actually better health, which is actually a good thing.